This MacBook Air is eight years old. It was never the fastest computer, even eight years ago, and it definitely isn't now. This laptop is basically on its last legs. It takes 30 minutes to boot up, and sometimes when it goes to sleep, might just randomly take 30 minutes to wake up to. If you're still holding onto a laptop that is this old or behaving this poorly, you're probably thinking about just getting rid of it. But what if I told you you can make it feel like new and maybe even better than some new computers? Let's get started with the little repair. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that lets you basically take as many classes on their site as you'd like for a single monthly fee, helping you invest in yourself and your own personal growth. These classes are done through different video lessons and projects to help you learn more about the many different things you're interested in, such as video editing, productivity, or even how to better create YouTube content. I'll let you in on a little secret. This channel is run by only me with some help from my wife. So I try to keep my YouTube production skills up to date easy to manage and always improving. So classes like MKBHD's YouTube success, script, shoot and edit really come in handy for me and has given me new advice as well as refreshed me on some ones I already knew but may have forgotten over time. Skillshare is curated towards learning so there are no ads in the classes and is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. If you're interested in Skillshare, check out the link in the video description below. The first 1000 subscribers to click on that link will get a one month free trial while joining on Skillshare. Anyway, back to the video. Okay, you've probably guessed by now that I don't mean that this laptop, which cost $900 new in 2014, would ever perform as good as a $900 laptop now in 2022. But old laptops like this MacBook or any older laptop in general could make a great cheap laptop alternative and provide way more functionality than you think, even for some power users. Why buy your kid a $200 or $300 laptop to do his schoolwork on when you could just fix your old laptop up for even less than that? At six years old, little Timmy can't even count that high. And that's basically what we're doing today. We're going to revive this MacBook Air and see if the cost to fix the MacBook Air is worth it over buying a cheap budget laptop from your local electronic store like a Best Buy. First, I wanna acknowledge that some repairs just aren't worth it. Right now on eBay, these 2014 11 inch MacBook Airs are going for almost $200. Replacing something like the display or the logic board on this laptop or doing a time consuming repair could be expensive, stressful, and in the long run, not worth the benefits of the repair. So if you're trying to do something similar with one of your laptops too, get familiar with what you're trying to fix and do a bit of research. iFixit is an invaluable resource to fixing all of your popular junk, and I highly recommend checking the difficulty of repair or cost of a part on their website. I'm not sponsored by them, but the information on their site has been personally fantastic for me. And if that repair isn't worth it, find a worthy tech recycling place to get rid of it or sell it on eBay for scraps or something. Okay, so laptops as a product category in general are much more difficult to repair than your average regular heavy bricks that we call desktop computers. And Apple of all companies is one of the worst when it comes to this, with their latest laptops even harder to repair than their older ones. I mean, it shouldn't take an hour to replace a battery. That's stupid. But if we're talking laptops in general, you can at least expect the hard drive or SSD battery, and sometimes RAM to be beginner-friendly upgrades that anyone who can hold a screwdriver can do. But of course, all of those things could be more difficult or even easier depending from laptop to laptop model. All right, so what's wrong with this particular MacBook Air? Well, over a year ago, the internal SSD on this laptop pooped out. So it's been running macOS on this tiny little baby flash drive. But because of this, when you turn the laptop on, it takes forever to notice that the internal SSD is dead. So it always decides to make up its mind after 30 minutes to boot from the flash drive. Also, the battery is eight years old and well, desperately needs replacing. So when it comes to this particular MacBook Air, we need to resolve two major issues, the SSD and battery. And luckily for us, these are two minor issues that are both cheap to repair and easy to repair. From there, with quick Google searches, we can see that these tasks aren't hard at all. And the best part is they're not expensive repairs either. It does come with one major caveat though. Apple uses proprietary NVMe SSDs, making it more confusing and more expensive to purchase the correct SSD. Apple isn't the only one who uses proprietary stuff instead of just going industry standard, but they are definitely the most well-known one to do so. Luckily, 
Luckily for us though, it's been eight years. SSDs in general have decreased in price and manufacturers have had plenty of time creating old MacBook compatible SSDs and converters for existing SSDs. A 256 gigabyte SSD cost me $43 and a new battery only cost me $65. Places like Micro Center may have stock of the battery for your particular laptop, but you can also find them on iFixit or Amazon. I don't normally use Amazon, but it's a last resort if I can't find a particular part. Of course, Apple also uses proprietary screws on all of their laptops, so you'll need the right tools for that. You could buy a screwdriver with the right bit or something like the iFixit Mako driver kit, which actually comes with all the common weird screws that tech companies use. So the total cost of this repair will range between $110 to $150, depending on if you need to get the right screwdrivers. Beyond that, the upgrade was pretty easy. You unscrew the bottom panel, making sure to keep all the screws in one location, disconnect the battery from the computer to be safe, unscrew the SSD, and then gently lift it and pull it out. So not all old laptops have NVMe SSDs. If you have a SATA SSD or hard drive in your laptop, it more than likely looks like a rectangle mounted on some sort of tray. That's what you'd want to remove. From there, I reversed the order of the steps I did and installed the new SSD. Battery removal, like I mentioned earlier, is usually model to model, but typically manufacturers try to make this easy to change. For this laptop, all you need to do is make sure the battery is disconnected remove five screws around the battery and lift the edges. Basically to put it all back, all we have to do is put the new one in, screw it back in, reattach it, put the back plate on, and now we have a fully functioning 2014 11 inch MacBook Air that performs like new. So with about $150 spent, would money have been better spent on buying a new laptop instead? Well. Let's take a quick look at bestbuy.com. Obviously, Best Buy is not the place everyone will buy a computer, but a pretty safe option to see what's available out there. And well, here's what I found. To be honest, the MacBook Air from eight years ago was never a powerful machine to begin with. And honestly, after looking through this list at Best Buy in this price range, the MacBook Air seems just as good, if not better than some of these machines from a performance standpoint. These machines usually had slower processors or smaller storage sizes. They do have pretty nice IO though, I'll give them that. But overall, buying a bargain bin laptop, at least to me, is not a value oriented purchase. Honestly, nothing performs as well as this 2014 MacBook Air until you hit around $250 and above. And really laptops as a category start to get diversity in features, performance and value more at the $400 to $600 mark. At $150, everything just looks and performs kind of same-ish. I mean, this really is as low as you can go and it is not good. So obviously after this research, we're better off repairing the MacBook Air versus a new cheap laptop for the same price, right? Kinda. The problem with repairing a laptop is that it's old. It was used as someone's daily driver machine for years and has some cosmetic wear and tear that some might say adds character, but really translates to meaning there's a higher chance something goes wrong or dies because it's been through a lot. And at that point, it might not be worth repairing again. Basically, repairing a used laptop is a ticking time bomb and we'll never know when it will need another repair. It might not need one for another eight years. It might need one in two years. Also, software updates. This Mac can't download the latest version of Mac OS, meaning features and security updates are going to be minimal to non-existent moving forward. Luckily, these Intel Macs can run Windows 11 with some work or Chrome OS Flex, a cleaner version of Chrome OS, which basically turns the laptop into even more of a netbook than a standard Chrome OS laptop. So at least you'll have choices of user-friendly operating systems, even if it isn't Mac OS. And lastly, there's IO. We're talking about USB ports, HDMI ports, stuff like that. With older machines, you may get ports that were common then, but no longer used anymore. On this 2014 MacBook Air, it would be the Thunderbolt 1 slash mini display port. You can still find adapters for it, but it's just not a widely used connector anymore. But this MacBook Air also has a MagSafe connector, something Apple got rid of and is now starting to introduce back with a new version, MagSafe 3. Overall, I do think these upgrades give the laptop an extra two to three years of life. And if you're only using it for documents, emails, or for kids to do homework, it's more than enough. Even as a power user, you can find good uses for an old laptop. It can run Home Assistant to control your home automations. It can be used as a Plex media server. It can be used as a budget ingest station for your video footage. And can even be used to remote into more powerful machines while you're away from those big and bad machines. That's at least everything I can come up with on the top of my head.
So I guess it's conclusion time. Fixing up your old laptop could be a good way to bring back your laptop from the dead and can turn it into a decent casual machine. Of course, it's nowhere near as good as it was during its prime, but it feels wasteful to throw away something that could be useful and outperform some brand new devices. It can be more cost effective than buying a cheap laptop and could provide value for casual users and power users alike, as long as their expectations are reasonable. This laptop can really only handle the necessities now. And really, that's not a bad thing at all. There's still a person that would benefit benefit from that. There are concerns though, like the cost and time it takes for you to repair it and software and hardware updates that these old machines don't get compared to bright and shiny new ones. But at the end of the day, I think it might just be worth at least a Google search on what it might take to fix your laptop before leaving it for dead. Anyway, what do you personally think? Is a cheaper price to repair your old machine worth the possibility that it can still fail? Is it better to take the risk since it is cheaper than a new machine? What kind of laptop repairs do you draw the line at that you would never cross? Or for the peace of mind, would you just get rid of this thing and buy a new device? Leave all that in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Bye.